Hello, welcome to Mad Games Tycoon 2. Um, today is going to be a bit different from what I usually do, because we are going to talk about the game for beginners. New players to this game, what can you expect, how do you start, and how to play the game, basically. This is going to be a tutorial like I haven't done before, actually, because even my first tutorial was on Legendary. This one is going to explain to you exactly everything about the game from start to end. Right now, the game is not actually officially done yet. It's still in early access after over two years now of being in there. We still have a bit of development left. There are a few things that are missing in this game still. However, the game is very, well, close to completion, let's say, in my opinion at least. So, you first have that menu screen, you know, it's, uh, well, just there. <laughs> you do have the two different modes now. You have the new game and you have the sandbox. Mm, yeah, you have sandbox as well to start with. And so, you have a lot of things that you can tinker with in this sandbox mode. You can do basically whatever you want. Uh, you can even go to minus 90% game sold, minus 90... You can do some pretty fun stuff. Um, I, I don't recommend doing that at the start of the game, let's be honest. But maybe as a cool little challenge later on, it could maybe be something interesting. However, most of you probably all of you, will start by just pressing new game. What you will see normally is level of difficulty medium when you, whenever you start. Okay, I was on legendary, but let's not talk about that right now. Let us just begin with the basics. You will just have to choose a company name, choose a logo. You do have historical real company logos, almost real, because you know that they don't own the rights to really get on the real names, so they have changed them with one letter or just changing the name a little bit every time. Like, for example, Minisoft instead of Microsoft, Nintendo instead of Nintendo. Uh, EA still is EA, but as you can see, it's not exactly the same, so that's why. Uh, Blizzard Studios, you have a lot of those. And there are over a hundred, over a hundred companies now in the game. Uh, yeah. And then you also have some little logos that you can just choose. Um, I usually, myself, always go with this one. And I name my, my company Blue Comet. That's just what I like to do. I don't know. It, it looks fine with this. With this logo, you know, it looks pretty good. Then you do have the company headquarters. Before, this actually gave you a little bonus in sales. Mm based on a genre, but nowadays it doesn't actually do that because, well, they added basically a lot of countries. So, nowadays they this, this is just flavor, you know. However, this is not flavor, a special genre. As you can see here, the special genre gives a bonus of plus 3% on the review result of your game. Furthermore, your fans will never get bored of this genre. Now, boredom isn't something that it gets inf affected in medium, easy, or very easy in level of dif difficulty. It only becomes something that you have to care about in hard, very hard, and legendary. There you go. Now, you also can choose your year of start. There are many from 1976 all the way to 2020. The game starts in 1976. Now, if you look at basically, like, Game Dev Tycoon, <laughs> to go with a game like this, I think Game Dev Tycoon starts in 1982. Because I think a year after, you have the NES, when you start Game Dev Tycoon, you know? In Mad Games Tycoon 1, you started in 1980. And now, in Mad Games Tycoon 2, you start even earlier than that, in 1976. Now, 1976, if you don't know, is the year where we've had two things really on the market. The Apple I, which was a computer made, you know, by the two founding fathers of Apple uh, in their garage with almost, I think it was 100,000 sales. I think, I'm not even sure about that. Maybe 10, 
Nah, th- th- uh, somewhere around those two numbers. But it was a very primitive machine that didn't, like... You had to buy everything that wasn't just the machine, you know, the computer. So you had to buy the screen, you had to buy the key- keyboard, you had everything to get yourself after getting the Apple one. Anyway, and then af- uh, with that as well, you had the Fairchild F, I think it was. Right? I think it was the Fairchild F. Uh, which was... Which in this game is called the Fairtech CF. It is a console. What is counted as a console in this game. And uh, it was pretty damn primitive. But for 1976, I guess you couldn't ask for better. This was a year before the Trinity of PCs released in 1977. Now, if you don't know what that is, that is the Commodore PET... The TRS-80? Well, the Tandy, if you prefer. Just calling it the Tandy. And then the Apple II. The Trinity that was released in 1977. The Apple II was released in the middle of the year, and in this game, in 1977, at month one, week two, you get both... Well, you actually get the pet. At that time. There you go. Uh, But, so, let's talk about a bit more about the mechanics of the game. So you have two development time. I usually stick to standard. Realistic is making the game a little bit harder as well. And then you can choose the number of competitors. As you can see, as you can see, you can go all the way to 100. Before you were stuck at about 45 at the beginning, but they added a lot more. And now you have a hundred real companies that existed. Uh, you can see here, Neon Storm. What is that? That's Ion Storm. If you don't know, look it up. Uh, well, you may know because of Deus Ex, but other than that, there is a game that is in there as well. That Let's not talk about it. Uh, but yeah, let me talk about more about the special genre. Uh, this gives you plus 3% of, your, of the review result of your game. We're going to talk about why that's important. But um, as, I, as I talked about boredom, not something in the first episode that I'm going to talk about. But to talk about what is going on in this game, you start with four genres. Four. You have skill game, puzzle game, adventure, and you may think role-playing game. No, it's actually under here. It's racing. So you have one, two, three, four genres. That's the four, first four you start with. Then in 1977, you will unlock role-playing game. 1978, strategy. 79, action. 80, platformer. 81 simulation and sports game and after that it's a bit fuzzy in my brain but these are also some some that some that you get in the years that follow with survival game being one that is now added uh, that was added last year there you go we are going to start with a medium just to show you the game you know however at one point in that series of videos we are going to work our way little by little to legendary just to show you how to work your way in there and how different legendary is compared to the rest you also have five different game speed now these won't really show any effects if you keep adjust if you don't use this adjust working speed you have to keep that okay because if you don't you, you need to take that away you know because if you don't the game is just going to be slow or fast for nothing. <laughs> I mean, for very fast, do adjust, because it's going to make the game much faster for you, you know. But for normal, and further than that, in the marathon, don't keep that, because it's going to make the things much faster, and you'll see. It's it's it, it's fun. I like playing in marathon. Uh, that's just one thing I'll say. <laughs> you also have five different maps. Uh, one of them is just a massive square, <laughs> but after that you have some different ones that you could use, like the Palm Beach Resort it has one main bat, one main building, and then three small ones, if I remember. European Manor is a bit of a different layout, and an abandoned bunker. I have I haven't actually seen it because I usually stick to the industrial part, <laughs> which I think is just the map to play this game on. Anyway, here you'll be able to choose your appearance as well. Just choose whatever you want. It's fine. You have a good amount of things to choose from, but of course the graphics are limited. This is not the main point of the game, you know, where this is a simulation. You don't look at the graphics, <laughs> let's be honest. 
Now, the thing that you will be looking at in this screen is these two little things at the bottom. So you have skills and you have perks. Now, perks is pretty important. So you have a maximum of four perks that you can use, as well as just getting yours, which is always going to be put for your character, which is CEO. Your character does not lose motivation. However, as you can see, there is a good little amount of extra perks that you can find. Uh, I will try and remember exactly what all of them do. So you have the star, which is star designer, which gives extra hype in development for a game. You will see what we're talking about, all of, all of those things. This one is no breaks for your character. This one is error free, which means you will not make any bugs for your game with this character. This one is talented, which means that you are learning quicker because yes, there is something like learning in this game. There is a special room for it, you'll see. Then this is luck, which means that you get less critical failure, I think. Yeah, critical work results occur significantly more frequently. So it's actually the good ones, the good, cr the good luck things actually happen to you more frequently. This one, sporty, better movement speed, I think it's about 20%. Uh, orderly, no garbage, no dirt. Medical miracle, employees with a strong immune system never get sick. Iron bladder, no toilet need. Uh, leadership, strong leadership, better bonus for uh, lead developers. It's fine, but not for your character. You'll see why. All rounder, increases your ability for secondaries. Uh, what that means is, from normally, as you can see here, you have one bar that is mainly white, full white. And then you have all of them, the other ones, are at 50. With this, you'll be able to increase that to 60 for all the other ones. You'll see that is very important. Uh, then you have Pixel Artist, which makes uh, higher points, higher graphics points for retro game. Not really that good. You won't be making many retro games, don't worry. Uh, porting Specialists. Higher tech points when a game is ported. Sequel, uh, that's higher points, higher gameplay points for your sequel, which is great. But it's not actually that big, you, you, you'll see. <laughs> engine expert, uh, these employees can develop engines much faster. Not the biggest necessity, because engines, yes, later on they do take a bit of time, but you will have enough people, you'll see. Workaholic, contract work much faster. This can be good in certain situations, like legendary. And efficient makes all your tasks 10% faster, which is good. It's really good. This one is almost a necessity. Anyway, I take four with myself, and it's always the same four. Air-free, talented, all-rounder, efficient. This is incredibly important, in my opinion, to get all four of these for legendary. <laughs> now, it's not as necessary for things like normal and... and things like that, because the game is just very easy at that point. In my opinion, the game is much easier. But let's talk about all these points. So, normally you'll be like this. With 15 points and 50 skill points left to attribute, you can choose eight different professions. One of them is game designer, one of them is programmer, graphics artist, sound artist, office worker, game tester, technician, and researcher. Each one of them has one uh, skill that is attributed at 100 for all of them. Game designer is for game design, programmer for programming, and so on, you know it. There is only two that I would recommend to take with your main character. Either game designer or programmer. In my opinion, programmer makes more sense. For a simple reason, you make less programming points than you make gameplay points very early on. You will see why. Probably not in this episode, but maybe in the next one. Uh, because this one, we're already 15 minutes in and we have not even started the game, so you'll, yeah. Um, what I like to do in a normal game is just go with, not 60 points, that's a bit much, but 40 points, 30 points in game design as well, because game design is still pretty important. And then the two that, for a developer, aren't as necessary, which is game design and music and sound. Just one each. Because it's always five by five. So one time each for both of those. This is what I like to start with for normal. 
In some cases, you may see me put this at 35 and this at 20, or even at 30 and this at 25. That is when I play in Legendary. Uh, the reason for that being the case in Legendary, because sometimes you may not get that researcher early, and it may screw you over in, in Legendary, but I usually just go with this nowadays and just wait until I get a researcher in the, in the, at the start. We're going to disable the tutorial, and you have a few extra things that you can add, like historical random events, which basically mean that they're not random, because <laughs> they're just... <laughs> they're just historical, so yeah, they're not random. Uh, you can also choose a lot of things here. Platform popularity increases platform lifetime, which make a bit of sense. But random popu platform popularity, random game concept settings, random genre combinations, and increased random factors for review. Some of those are a bit experimental, like these three in my opinion, but <laughs> you know, you can use them. Although you'll see that it's very difficult if you're trying to go for a level that is very hard. Like, if you're playing a normal, I would say to use these. Just because, you know, eh, it makes the game a bit more fun in normal. But if you're going legendary, oh boy, these are hard to play with. I have tried. Uh, that's hard. Anyway, I'm just going to disable the tutorial and show you exactly what to do. Alright. First things first, you delete the, the car. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I skipped that part. But no, you delete the car. That's the first thing that you do because it gives you an extra 20,000 and also it just saves up a lot of space. Now, in this menu that you see here, you have a few things, first of all. Well, first of all, there's this button right here which shows you the top 10 best computer and console games uh, released at that week. The best, sale, the best sellers. There you go. However, the main important things that you are going to looking, look at are this, uh, this thing at the top here, which shows you the trending genre and the trending topic as well, and the unpopular genre as well and topic. Topic doesn't matter as much, but yeah, still, it's there. As well, at the bottom, you will see a few tabs here. Uh, you have a few here. Um, one of them is statistics, then you have distribution options, which we'll cover in a later episode. You have management, employees, buy items, and build a room. The first thing you will do in this game is build a development room. There are four rooms available to you at the beginning of the game, and you basically have to make all of them to start. You will need all of them. Uh, the lounge is for motivating your employees and let them rest. The toilets, to let them rest. The research is very important, and you will see it whenever I build it. And the development is where you make your games. So, there are a few things you can do with this. You know, you can start and build a massive room like here, and then, as you can see, there is a little mark here. Overcrowding from 13 workplaces, which means that you can put in this room, with the space that you have built, 12 people inside. If you put 13, they will be unhappy. So with 13 here, you it's pretty good. You have 12 people that you can build in this room. But let's remove this, and uh, where do we put our first room? You know, what do we do exactly with that room? Before, what I like to do was just going here doing this, like this size of room, uh, yep, this size of room, uh, for a development room, I was like, hey, nine people, not that bad, you know, it's like eight max, you're, you're, you're not that bad, put that door in here, you know, and then that leaves you a lot of space here, you know, that's pretty good, however, there is a better way to do this, in my opinion, the better way is this room, this room leaves you with 12, now, you may be like, hey, that's a lot of space that you just use here. Yes, it is. However, to my, for my defense, you only need four rooms in this first building. As you can see here, you have a lot of buildings that are grayed out here. Look at all that. Yeah, a lot of them are gray. However, there's a reason for that. It's because you have to unlock them. Uh, but yeah, uh, the first building that you'll try to unlock is this one. However, the cost for it, you'll see it. 
So I'll just build the room right now. As you can see, it has a cost of 107,000. You can also just go much smaller if you want. You can go with a room like this, and it'll cost you a lot less, but you will not be able to make to put as many people inside of it. However, you can always extend the rooms, and I'll show you how. So I'll accept a room of this size, which gives you an overcrowding at 5, which means you can put 4 people in. Now, this room, as you can see, well, yeah, it's quite small. It's, it's for a few people, you know? If you click on this button right here, and then go down here, which is Redesign Room, you'll be able to go back to the same place here, and re reshape the room at your liking. The good thing about this game, you're not stuck to a square, so you can do a tre Tetris block if you want, or anything really, and it, this is why this game is actually so much better than the first in my opinion. <laughs> but let's stick with this size of room, and now let's try and just put on some items. So first thing you'll see is that you are on a system of blocks here, you know? You are. However you're not, because I, it's blocked by my head here. <laughs> But right there, this side, right here, there's supposed to be two buttons. One of them is snapping, and one of them is snapping for rotation. I'll just move my webcam so you see it. Uh, one sec. I'll just move my cam just so that you see the buttons, and then I'll move it back. <laughs> so let me just do this. Here you can go to buy items, and there you go. Snapping and snapping for rotation. So you can also press T to just get snapping off and now what you do is free build it's full free build mode so you can you can get things however you want now you also have a snapping for rotation which is this one right here and so you can really put them in any position you want any snapping for position for rotation though is not the greatest <laughs> let's be honest I like having them at 90, 90 degree angles, that's that's pretty good, you know, it's not necessary to look for anything else. Now let me put the camera back. <laughs> there we go. Alright, so we're gonna go on up until we make our first game, okay? How about we do that? So development. Work desk. This is the place where your people are going to sit. Now, you can just not use snapping, you know, uh, you can see it right here now actually. So you can just not use snapping and you will still be able to fit the rooms however you want and still put normally enough people. Uh, but I feel like sometimes you'll miss like one or two people by not using snapping. Same thing, now they've actually added, uh, a, a few months ago, they've actually added automatically place furniture. It is something you can use. It is actually pretty well done. I won't say it's not. It's pretty well done. And it adds everything you need in a room, except one thing that I hope they fix at one point. But I'll show you what it is. All right. L let's just do it. Let's just... Mm, sorry about that. Let's just do automatically place furniture. Put it on one star, because it doesn't matter anyway, because things cannot be at five stars right now. <laughs> because it's based on time. One star is unlocked at 1976, two star at 1985, and then every 10 years after that you get another star of item. So it doesn't matter if it's at one star or five stars, you will still be fine at one. Anyway, let's go. Let's press it, and there you go. It fit the room with all the requirements for a room. There you go. You have a, you have, if you look down here, you have a quality and you have heat. Now, heat is basically necessary for heaters, so you need heaters in order to get heat. I think that makes sense. Uh, you have two types of heaters, by the way. You have a normal one that puts only on walls, and you have one that you can freely put, but it heats less. Uh, like this bad boy that I have right here. I have one right here with me. Uh, that's an electric heater. Can I show it? I hope so. <laughs> Urgh, this guy. That's an electric heater. <laughs> I have one right here with me. Anyway, yeah. Uh, with that, <laughs> it heats well. I I don't have an issue with it. Anyway, but as you can see, that's a two in that's a two star in heat, and that that's a three star, and that's a five star in heat. Also, it costs more, and this one costs less. There is a monthly cost and a purchase price as well, um, which are very important when you get to later stages like legendary. And as I talked about, there is one thing that is missing, and it is a med cabinet, which is 
for healing sick employees because yes, your employees can get sick. And so let's add the med cab because it's necessary. It's something necessary. Just like, as you can see, two other things have been added, added and that's a water dispenser and a coffee maker, which are right here. They are also necessary for your employees to feel good. Med cab, there we go. And I have a bit of a meme, okay? And it's with the clock. I am a fervor defendant of the clock. Look at the time. There we go. This is the meme. <laughs> Just look at the time. <laughs> also, there is one extra thing that some people may like in a room, and that is a plant. So let's add that. And so heat is covered, and quality is also covered. There are a few things that can add quality. Plants do. Lamps also do. The clock also does, very slightly, but it does. And then you have radio, TV, you have all of these that can also add a bit of extra interior design. You have the tables, the awards also, they do count. You have pictures and you have carpets. As you can see, there are a lot of pictures and a carpet. So, eh, I guess that's fine, <laughs> it works. Also, one extra thing that they've added that actually does add interior design, windows. Look at that, they're a bit in the green, in the windows. So yeah, that counts. All right, and with that, our first room is now set. My guy here, I'm gonna click on him and send him in the room. Now, yeah, he was in the room, but he was not programmed to stay in the room. Now he is. And so now, let's build the other three rooms. Research is on the same vein as this, um, as, the, as the one that I just built, the development room. It's basically the same. So, let us just do the same thing. There you go. And as you can see, actually, on this one, it only had it two when it said that it could take three, which is bad because that means that I've lost one. I've just lost one, you know, and this is not good. They just, yeah, they got me to lose one. And that's because of this radio, by the way. Uh, radios are not necessary, and they actually sometimes may cannibalize yourself because they're... They, if you don't put them in every room, people are just going to go and swarm on one, <laughs> if you only have one, you know. So uh, not the greatest, but there we go. The research room is now done, and the research room is the most important room in the game, let's say. Because this is the heart of where you will put all of your resources to try and get farther into the game. For example, the first thing we look at is gameplay features. This is where you'll unlock everything, like from day and night cycle to, I don't know, esoteric graphics, let's say, you know, or like voice acting and things like that. This is where you will get those gameplay features. They cost money and they require a bit of time in order to make them. Not too bad though. Not in the beginning at, at least. As you can see, $5,000 for an arcade joystick support for 25 research points. You may be like, uh, what is that exactly? How, mu how much is 25 research points? Well, on someone with 15 research points like mine, you are going to get about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 point uh, per go per rotation of your time which means that you're gonna need about 30 of those in order to get that okay but then if you go to genres and you try to unlock one of these genres as you can see it's 50 points so double that number <laughs> okay and they also cost 30,000 each now this is where you unlock the genres of course I think that makes sense topics is also here you have 300 and four topics in the entire game. That is a lot. It, it was about 150 before, and they doubled that number, which is insane. Engine features is where you will unlock things for this part of the game. Develop engine. Now, if you look at an engine, you will be stuck with four features at the beginning of it. That this is for all the start. For level one, at the start of the game in 1976, this is all you'll have. ASCII graphics, which basically means text text graphics, which makes sense in 1976, because, like, the Apple One is basically only only that, and Fairtech, probably not that much better. Speaker, I mean, I, I know the Fairtech had, like, 
sprites, but they were pretty bad. Speaker sound as well. Only a few beeps come out of the speakers. When you think about 1976, what it was only like one beep. All right, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> it's my grandpa. Okay. I'm living at my grandpa here for all of that setup right here because I have optic fiber here and I don't at home. But anyway, let's get back into this. Sorry, I don't make any cuts on the, that kind of videos. I don't know, I'm sorry about that. Anyway, yeah, speaker sounds. When you think about it in 1976, you maybe didn't even have that. Not in 1976. Because, like, when I think about it, the pet, the first ever pet, the pet series 2001, did not have a beeper, <laughs> did not have a speaker at all. The first uh, to get it, I think, was the 4016 or 8. 4008? Maybe 4008. But yeah, there we go. So that, that means that speakers were not really universal at all. And uh, it was basically one voice, you know, one voice beeper, and uh, it wasn't good. However, artificial intelligence as well, here you go. Primitive AI. It's not AI, basically. It's only you, you put something, you, you, you script everything about it. I mean, it's AI, but it's so primitive that it cannot be counted as AI nowadays, you know. Nowadays, AI, when you think about AI, <laughs> you think about everything procedurally generated about, like, oh my god, it's so insane about AI right now. And, like, the fact that they can replicate voices and everything, right? Oh my god, it's insane. And physics, not even something that you really think about when you think about 1976. <laughs> I don't think so. But there you go, that's everything in an engine at the beginning. And then you'll get here a list of extra features to get, which is great. So yeah, there you go, that's all of those things. Then you have two things that are locked, but why? Why are those locked? Because those are locked because of miscellaneous. They're locked because you don't have console development. Because this, these two here, they're made for consoles only. So hardware is extra hardware, better hardware to unlock for a console. Console features, same thing. F features that you will add in a console in order to make it better. The first one you will unlock, I think, is keyboard support, <laughs> I think. Uh, and then you'll have turbo mode, you'll have backward compatibility, you'll have so many of those things that are quite nice to have in a, in a machine, you know. Backward compatibility actually gets unlocked in 1981, if I remember correctly, which is weird. <laughs> it feels very weird. But yeah, yeah, in miscellaneous, this is where you will be able to unlock every room and a little bit more as well. Uh, and also, yeah. It, as you can see, some of the costs are insane. Ten million dollars with four thousand research points for unlocking console development. But again, it makes sense. Same for production. Five million to produce your own games. But it makes sense. Let's make the other two rooms now. Lounge. The lounge. Uh, so you cannot go in this f little corner right here. This is uh, reserved for the door, the main door. So you cannot actually put anything in here. Uh, as rooms. You can put items, but as rooms, you cannot. So this is how I like to do my uh, lounge room, just a 4 by 3 with an extra. That extra is not necessary, by the way, but I like to put it. And there you go. Filled in with a few little arcade machines, and uh, even a dock machine, and then a fridge. And the interior design, plus heat, everything is good in there. No issues. Even a med cab in this room. Nice. And last, toilets. Just put them in here, and normally you have two, yep. However, you can fit three in this place. I know you can, because you don't need this. Also, who puts a carpet in the bathroom? <laughs> Seriously, who? If you do, no, <laughs> view your tastes again, please. <laughs> okay, there we go. Put the ra uh, radiator in the middle of those two, the heater, if you want to say it like that. And then it's one two and you can put a third you have enough space for three toilets in a five by three you have enough space there we go and that is the setup for the beginning of a game in mad games tycoon just four rooms that's all you have
four rooms. Now that's in 1976. Whenever you start later, you will be able to unlock more things. And then maybe, <coughs> maybe get some better rooms and enough to unlock like a second building or a third even. Who knows? I don't know. So, in here is the job market. This is where you'll be able to get more people. Uh, these are not the greatest to start with. Uh, some people that you find will have unfortunate things that they have in the malice, if you want to say it like that. And as you can see here, this one, as a programmer, is maybe talented, maybe a medical miracle, but he's unfocused, which means that he'll make more bugs. That's not great. <laughs> Already the fact that he creates bugs is not great, but the fact that he creates more bugs, not the greatest. Especially with a character that already doesn't produce bugs. Not the greatest. That counteracts everything, you know. Um, he has 19 in research, though. She, sorry. I didn't see the name or anything. I don't look at names or something like that, but there you go. So she has 19 in research, which means she can be used as a little researcher until I get an actual researcher. <laughs> Apparently there is no heater in this room, and I, I didn't look. So let me put one here. Oh, and of course, how could I forget? Look at the time. In every room. <laughs> okay, and so with that, that girl at 19 points, I can actually try and get arcade joystick support right here. At the same time, I had one that was at 38 points in music and sound. Now, I did say that music and sound and graphic design were not good, mandatory, or anything like that for... <gasps> for your game development room, and that's true. However, getting one of each actually makes more oh god, actually makes more sense because you will be able to get at least some extra points in that category. You'll see what I mean. So, oh god, I'm skipping through this, I'm sorry. Uh, so, in here you have five different categories. Support is just supporting a different same type of room. So if you have another development room, you can get the arrow to the development room and just click and you'll be able to support that room, which means you'll be able to do the same task as them, basically. Up on that, you have updates and add-ons, which may which get some extra updates or make an add-on for an existing game. I think you know what that means, I think. Develop an engine, we well, already showed you. Develop a game, you have different types of games to develop. You even have sequels, spin-offs, remasters of a game, new arcade cabinet game, new mobile game, not released yet, whenever a smartphone is released, yes, and porting a game, uh, which basically is, so you make a game on a PC, you'll be able to port that game on an arcade or on a mobile game, you know? And that's basically what porting is. It's not a port from a console to another console. That's not what they call a port here. Normally, that's what we would call a port, but that's not what it is. Like, basically, from a handheld device, you know, like a Game Boy or a Nintendo DS to an actual console or a PC, they don't call it like that. Not not here. Anyway, uh, let's work on a commissioned work. Now, we have two types of commission works for a development room. You have a short assignment, which will give you a workload and a penalty or a number of money that you'll get if you are able to finish that um, game. That game, no, it's not just a short work. As you can see here, optimized loading times. It's basically like, just for a game, you're gonna try and not fuck it up. <laughs> uh, I mean, how can you have loading times in 1976? <laughs> like a game is like two kilobytes. <laughs> what loading time? Anyway. It's fine. They don't do that on time, you know, it's just there. And yeah, there you go. Optimize loading times. And as you can see, it's going to give me 17,000 whenever that's done, which is a good number. So at the bottom here, you have three different times, you know, pause, times one and times two. I like to stay on times two. <laughs> there you go. And so with that 17,000 done now, how about we work on our own game? One game right now immediately. Now... Uh, the one important thing that I'm going to talk about in making a game. Yes, you can make a game for yourself immediately. You could. You could make a game for yourself immediately. You just choose a genre, choose a topic. Look a bit here also at target group. Like you're like, hmm, 
what is a good target group for a skill gain? Well, if you are actually struggling to figure that out, I have a perfect solution for you. That is, only if you don't care about spoilers, I guess. But, let me show you. Ta-da! The sheet. So this is a uh, cheat sheet, as I called it. This is made by me, and me only. Um, I do not give permission for anyone else to actually put anything in there, because you can just... Like, all of what I'm doing here is something, is things that you can find on the internet, okay? There you go. But I don't care, I have not looked at anything about this game, okay? I haven't looked at anything. But I have tried and... I've tried and done my own sheet with every single genre. And to show you, in this, you have three different phases of making a game. So you can choose a target group. For a skill game, it is children. There we go. And then you can just choose a console. Now you have between, uh, I'm gonna put it on active users here. You have a lot of uh, ways to look at how, uh, look at the things. I like to do market share before, but it kind of doesn't make sense whenever you get to a handheld. At one point you'll see. But active users is a better representation of how big a console really is, or a computer in that case. We're here with the Apple One. Now, in real, Apple One, the Apple One never sold 1.8 million, okay? The Apple One sold about 100,000, as I said before. But in this game, they just put it at 1.8 million here, just so that you could have sales at the beginning of the game. It's normal. I'm okay with that. Thank you, game. Nice. And so, if you get to that fourth little point here, you will have a lot of sliders. Oh my god, what is this? What is this? What is going on? Well, this is where the sheet comes in handy. Because the sheet has all the answers you need. <laughs> that is a really good way to sell it. Now, if you look at it here, I have put the genre in order of release. Um, and so you have the four at the beginning here. There we go. Then, after it, I have put the target group. And so, as you can see, one is for children, one is for adults, one is for teens, one is for seniors. At the beginning, those are the four that you have. So you have all four of the target groups. For a skill game, though, you can see that I have put some numbers after it. Like, all of these numbers. What do they mean? The numbers, Mason. Well, what they mean is these sliders. That's what they mean. These sliders go from 1 to 10, and you have to keep a balance of a maximum of 40 points. You cannot go under... You cannot go above. It's 40 points, and that's it. Always just 40. Now, if you that means if you have a 10, you'll have to counteract that with a 0 or with a 4 and 1, you know? If you have an a, a 7 and you, you, you think you're good, like, like with a, let's say you're at a 2, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. You think you're good? No, because you cannot be under 40 as well. You have to be at 40, just at 40. Now, these three sliders here are unrelated. They are the design direction. They are unrelated to the first eight here at the top. And then you have four extra sliders here, which are the design priority. Now, these are given to... Now, where do I get all this info? I'll give you that answer probably in the next episode. Whenever I'm set up with all of that, whenever I have a quality assurance room, I'll be able to show you. Right now, I'm not able to because, well, I don't have that room. <laughs> uh, but yeah. To get all of those sliders, you'll need an extra room to do that. But there we go. Children, and then phase one is what I call the first eight sliders, as you can see. So it's five, two, eight, five, two, three, eight, seven. So let's go back here. Uh, I'm gonna put it one second. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on the side for me so that I can still see it. <laughs> Would be nice. There we go. So five, two, eight. 5. As you can see, that stays at 40. And then 2, 3, 8, 7. And there you go. Everything is counteracted with 1 going down, 1 going high. 1 going down, 1 going high. Everything is counteracted. And then you have the 3 sliders for the second phase that are right here. 7, 1, 7. And so, we're putting that in there. The same thing. 7, 1, 7. And then for design priority, same thing. It's put on the, on the sheet. It's 40, 10, 10, 40. Now, what that means here is that you will get in the review. 
what uh, for for uh, for a game like this? When you think about it, what are you looking for in a skill game? Are you looking for graphics and sound? Because you're looking for good gameplay and great maneuverability in how, what you do in a game. And so there you go. This is where the 40, 10, 10, 40 comes in. Because there you go. That's just there. That's just what it is. It's like if you're playing Osu. You're not playing it for the graphics. <laughs> you're playing it a bit for the sound, but uh, this is just music. <laughs> But there you go. So this is where those sliders come in. Uh, and then here comes the part of why you should not be making your own game as the first ever game. This counts for normal, this counts for hard, this counts for very hard, legendary, even probably easy and very easy. Even if those two, they're so easy that you don't really care, <laughs> let's be honest. But as you can see here, you have five stars at the bottom of this. At the bottom of every single one of them. And also, those stars are actually things that you have here for skill game as well in hunting. Look at that. What are those stars? What do they mean? And also, here. Yeah, star is here too. Yeah. Now, what does that mean? It means that you are not proficient at that console or genre or even feature. It means that you don't know exactly what you're doing. Now, in the... Oh, also, engine. Because... That also counts. If you look here, that also counts. I forgot about languages as well, to talk about languages. Um, every uh, country normally has a language that they have put themselves on. And then you have another extra 10 languages that you can put. Uh, you can enable all of them or just enable the one that is free. You have one that is free every time. You just have to look it up and see which one doesn't increase the dollars here. But basically, yeah, one language free, all of the other ones will increase the money, will increase money a bit, a bit, it's fine. But as you can see, even for those, uh, they have no stars. And they give you 20 points, like 20 points in graphics, 20 points in sound here. And then it's 10 and 10 for both gameplay and technology for both of these two. Uh, but like for controller support, keyboard support and pause function here, you can see that you also have the same numbers. You have aid in gameplay and aid in technology for controller support. Okay, what does that mean? Well, it means that if you finish this, if you finish this thing, it will in turn give you eight gameplay and eight technology points. Same thing for keyboard support. Five and five. Boom. There you go. Five points in each. Cool. Thank you. And then same for pause function. Five and five. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this, I guess. And uh, you can also see that there's a price. Yeah, that's 3,000. That's 2,000. That's 2,000. Oh, man, that's rather high. Yes, it is. And the thing is <laughs> that all of those stars, they mean a lot for the game. Getting a no stars on a genre, being at no stars on a genre, makes it so that the game that you are going to make in that genre will get a less good review than if you were at one star or two star or three stars or four stars or so on. So, what I recommend is never doing an own game, a game for yourself, where the revenue is going to you without at least having three stars in a genre. Three stars, yes. Now, for the features... Well, that kind of is the same, but at the same time, it's not. Let me explain. <laughs> it's a bit weird to, to say all that in this situation, but if you want to look at what I'm explaining here, look at the last series I've made in Legendary. I don't explain things as much as I'm explaining here, which is why I'm making this video right now, just to try and explain to you a little bit more of what the game is and how the game is played, really. But so gameplay features... They give you points, sure, but uh, at no stars, they give you 50% less points. At one star, they give you 40% less points. At, three, at two stars, they give you 30% less. And so on, until you are at five stars and you get the full amount of points. At the same time, what they've added nowadays also is that at no stars, a feature that you spend on a game, the time you spend on a, on a feature is 50% increased. 
Now, that doesn't mean you make more points. It just means that the timer, you know, you have a little, little round that goes like this every time, and when it completes, you get points on a game or on a feature or anything you're doing. But if you look at for, for the, the, whenever you're doing a feature at zero stars or when you're doing, looking at a feature at five stars, at zero stars, it'll do this. Boom, done. And done again. And done again. But if you are at five stars, it goes like this. Boom. 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 It's so much faster. That's what I'm trying to tell you here. At five stars, the games are so, so, so much faster to do. But uh, there is a lot of things to explain in this uh, for why this is the case. To show, I will just go for a commission work. Now, this is how you improve yourself on the stars of everything without actually doing your own game. So there you go. We'll do the same thing with the same game. However, you cannot choose the console here. I was going for the, for the Apple one, but no, you're stuck on the Fairtex EF. You cannot move this. It's an exclusive game for the Fairtex EF. That is what the, what the contractor tells you, and that's what you have to do. Now, same thing. For a contracted game, just go for France only, or your, no, your language only. Because <laughs> then you, you will just... Look at that. Zero instead of 2,600. And it's even worse, because that doesn't count when I put the features on. Look at that. Boom. 4,500. So even putting one language on increases by $450, which is a number. Now, of course, it cannibalizes the sales, but for a contracted game, you do not care because you do not get any money from the game. So you don't care. All right, now let's do this again. So it's 5285 and then 2387, right? Yes, 2387. I do not know this perfectly, okay? Because, I mean, I, I rely on that sheet. <laughs> I rely on that sheet every time I'm doing something. And just to say, that sheet is not complete. But if you ever want that sheet, I will gladly give it to you. Uh, in the comments, if you ever ask for it, I will just give it away. And so there you go. This game costs 30000 to make. And I will be able to make, as you can see here, payment is what you get at the beginning of the game. What the, the money that they give you for making the game. And if you actually complete the game with a good enough rating, they will give you a bonus of 36000 as you can see here. And so, what you can look at in this screen here, after starting the game, is you have a few little extra things. So you can change the design priority, which, fine, but whatever. You can also add a copy protection or anti-cheat, which are not things that are available right now, but they will increase your rating a little bit in later stages whenever they're unlocked. Then you can add some extra gameplay features, like if you have like extra features that are getting developed, they're getting researched and that you want to add them to the game, you can do that. Yes, I'll do it. And then you have uh, one last thing, which is just development report, which shows you the progress of the game with the most important thing in the game, current estimated rating. <laughs> now this little thing, if you've seen me uh, play in Legendary, this is the most important screen in the entire game. <laughs> Just because that current estimated rating is giving you everything. So what I mean by that is a game that is at 1 to 10, from 1 to 10%, that's clear enough, you know, it's 1 to 10. There you go. However, let's increase a bit. Let's see a bit where we go from this. And look at that. Boom. 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 And that's a 10, per that's, you know, that's at 0%, but then it's 50% faster if you are at full stars. But anyway, okay, still 1 to 10. I want to show it at 1 to 20, just to see what, you know, what I can show you with this. It's not there yet. Let's add, since you know we have finished arcade joystick support, let's add it, because we can. And also, there are three colors that you can see here at the top. So there's yellow, there is green, and there's also red. Now, um, these will actually give you more points if they're green. They'll give you a num normal, nor nor normal number of points if they're yellow. And, you know, if they're bad for the game, the genre of the game, they'll give you very little amount of points for finishing it. But you'll still get the points for going through it. As you can see here, when you're going through, 
the game, like, boom. When you're going through a feature, you still get some extra points, you know? Like 0 0.7, 0 0.6, but also some bugs. You gotta be careful about those bugs. See, 2.8 points, 2.8, 2.2, and yeah, that's amazing. And here you also have a new research, which is local high scores. So let's add that to this uh, little place here. We also have six people that want to join. And as you can see, there are some good ones. For example, well, we have this one here that I kind of want to add here in this room. And we also have a researcher at 39 points, which means I can just dismiss that employee right now. Because this one is so much faster. It's twice as fast. Look at that, 2.8 points, 2.1, insane. And so now that the game is at 60%, look at that. It says that our current estimated rating is from 20 to 40%. What that means though, is that the rating is actually 30% or plus. Yeah, that's weird, right, isn't it? Okay, so let me explain. Um, it, they should just say it's 30. <laughs> but no, what they do is, from 1 to 10, you get a 1% to 10% rating. From 1 to 20, you actually get a 10% rating, minimum. <laughs> and it disregards the first 10% of that estimated rating. It disregards it completely. You can get like 10, but that's it. <laughs> and like, same thing for here, 20 to 40, the minimum you can have is 30. <laughs> you cannot even have 29. I mean, I think there are some cases in like, Legendary where you can get that 29, but not lower. There is no way you get any lower than 29% for a 20 to 40. Let's continue and go even higher, okay? Let's go even higher just to show you 30 to 50. That's a 40% minimum. <coughs> and let's keep going just to show you that this is just, yeah, you cannot. See, 50 to 70, that's a 60% minimum. and so on and so forth until we get to 100%. You can see here the current estimated rating, 50 to 70%. Yes, there are 26 bugs, but that doesn't matter right now because we only need a minimum rating of 15% to get $36,000. So thank you very much. Now this screen here, what does that, what is this? What is this? Well, this is all the gain experience you have. This is how much a uh, contractor or anyone, a developer or a publisher likes you. As you can see, since I made the game for them, they actually like me a bit more. Then you have here the genre that did get an extra star. But like, what do they show this if you always get the star? No, you don't. That's the thing, no, you don't. <laughs> because now, if you actually get a pretty meh game, you have a chance of not getting a star for one of your features or engine features or even the console, the genre, anything. There is a chance that you do not get an extra star, which makes you, number one, slower. Number two, make less points. So it's not that good. <laughs> and there's no number three. I was about to search number three, but no, there's no number three. Those are the two points I wanted to make. So there you go. But now, with everything getting an extra star, this means that everything is faster and more efficient. There you go. And boom. And this game is a 67%. It's not a 50. It was never going to be a 50. But there you go, 67%. Now, of course, this is normal in difficulty. If you go higher in the difficulty, you will never get a 70% almost as your first ever game. <laughs> it is much more likely that you will get 10. <laughs> and I like, like, okay, uh, th this is much more advanced, but I'm just talking like that. For a racing game, you will never get above 10. <laughs> There's no way you will because of the fact that the graphics are the main one for the phase three and there's no way you're gonna get that. The design priority is way too high for graphics and you don't make any graphics points. There's no way you're gonna get anywhere. But there you go. Um, this is the end of the first episode, I think. We have been here for an hour. I hope I have explained everything for the beginning of how to set your game up. Next time, we will be a bit 
farther into the game, okay? We will go in 1980, let's say 1980, and we will look into Quality Assurance, Graphic Studio, Sound Studio. These are the three rooms we will look after, just to show you what you can do with those rooms, exactly how strong they are, and uh, just show you how much, the, how far the game can go. If you want that also, you can check out my three other series on this game that I've made, which are all about Legendary Mode. Now, I have the first series that I've made about like a year and a half ago now. Um, uh, thank you all so much for watching those videos, by the way. This is my most viewed video on the channel, the first episode of that uh, Legendary Gameplay. My most viewed video. Insane. Uh, but yeah... I, this is a video where I explain a lot of stuff about how Legendary works, but of course, at one point, we will be doing this on this series of videos as well. This is all the tutorial for everything about Mad Games Tycoon, and so, of course, we will go through Legendary mode as well. Um, but yeah, I have three series about Legendary. If you already want to check those out, be my guest. You can always do that. It's a fun series of videos that I've made. Everything is well explained, I feel, in those videos, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun doing those. And it shows you the improvement that the game has made also in the last a year and a half. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I'll see you all for the next video. Take care.